Hello, and welcome to a discussion of the Great Commission in five stanzas, or five restatements of the Great Commission. Hello, this is Steve Googe, your instructor. The term Great Commission is used to describe Jesus' final commissions to his followers to make disciples by taking the gospel to all people. This term, Great Commission, originated from the time of the Reformation. Typically, the term is used to refer to Matthew chapter 28, but it is also found in at least four other New Testament passages. It would not be incorrect to say that we will discuss the Great Commissions in this narrated PowerPoint. In this lesson, you will learn where to find the Great Commissions. Also, we'll talk about a variety of settings that we find the spoken words of Jesus that we describe as the Great Commission. We will learn how to know the Great Commission is so important. And then the key phrase, emphases, and ministry of each of the five expressions of the Great Commission. All of the commissions are post-resurrection sayings of Jesus said during the 40 days of appearances on earth prior to the ascension. Therefore, they are part of his final statements to his disciples. They were originally intended for his disciples, but they are also meant for every generation of followers, even down to today. The commission occurs in a variety of settings, with a cursory study, one can see each of these statements is nuanced in its context, but still communicates the importance of his unique commands. We see this in the settings in which they are spoken, and each one is different from the others in style and setting. Matthew records the words of Jesus spoken on a mountain in Galilee. The women are told by the angels to communicate with the disciples and tell them to meet Jesus in Galilee. Jesus himself also tells them to meet with him in Galilee. It's about 50 miles to the Galilean mountains. This is several days journey, so it did not occur on the day of the resurrection, but is a later event. Then in Mark, the setting is not so easily identified because of some textual considerations. The commission statement attributed to Mark under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is a verse within a pericope. Now, a pericope is a paragraph of Scripture. That pericope is dated on Easter Sunday night. Therefore, it must have been spoken in the city of Jerusalem. John and Luke has as their setting the first Easter Sunday night also. Technically, one could argue that it was in the wee hours of Monday morning. It is in Jerusalem, for sure. We continue with the settings of the Great Commissions. Acts records the commission a full 40 days after the resurrection in Bethany, near the Mount of Olives. Luke is the author of both the gospel that bears his name and the book of Acts, but he records two separate sayings of Jesus in two different locations. John's saying is so radically different from Luke's that it must have been given at a different location, even though it occurred on the same night. The Bible places a high priority on the post-resurrection ministry of Jesus, and almost every time he gets together with the disciples, he is repeating the Great Commission. He is reminding them of what he wants them to do. When Jesus says something once, it's of great importance. When he repeats it over and over, like in this case, it is overwhelmingly important. This is not just a passing statement from Jesus. We find in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the last words of Jesus before his ascension. In the ancient world, someone's last words carried great weight. Since these are the last words of Jesus, they are a big deal. He is saying one more time, I'm telling you what you are to be about. Four of the commissions are from the Gospels. It's important for us to recognize what a Gospel is. A Gospel is a certain type of literary genre. 
A gospel is not just history, but history that has an important message to promote. It has a driving purpose to it. It is history that has a distinct purpose. The writers of the gospel had to choose from a wide variety of material and omit much of the life of Jesus and the history of his ministry. John says, if I had included everything, the world would not be able to contain it. That's found in John 21, 25. All the gospel writers ended their writings with one theme, the Great Commission. This shows its importance. This carries enormous theological weight. Let's explore the five restatements of the commission. You notice in this table, we have the expression of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Acts, and John, the expression of their great commission. Now, if you will look on the left-hand side, you'll see the key phrase associated with this writer's expression of the great commission. You'll find the key emphasis and the key ministry. Let me just call your attention to what Matthew's expression of the commission was. We find it recorded in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. The key phrase is go and make disciples of all nations. I'm sure by now you understand that the command of this verse is make disciples. The key emphasis is every ethnic group. The word is te ethna in the Greek, and it means every ethnic group, or really it means every language group. And the key ministry is the discipling role. Go and make disciples. Mark's expression of the Great Commission is found in chapter 16, verses 15 through 16. His key phrase is preach the gospel to all creation. The key emphasis is the universal scope of the gospel. It's to go to all creation. And the key ministry is the preaching role. In Luke Acts, we find the commission expressed in Luke chapter 24, verses 46 through 49, and then again in Acts chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. The key phrase is, be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. The key emphasis is a progressive strategy going from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And the key ministry is a witnessing role, sharing the good news of Jesus with others. John's expression of the Great Commission is found in chapter 20, verse 21 of his gospel. The key phrase is, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. The key emphasis is the permanence of Christ and the church. And the key ministry is the sending role. Reconciliation is a theme of the Great Commissions. According to Baker's Bible Dictionary, the term reconciliation could be defined in this way. It's the restoration of friendly relationships and of peace where before there had been hostility and alienation. Ordinarily, it also includes the removal of the offense which cause the disruption of peace and harmony. Close quote. Reconciliation has at least the following considerations. First, Jesus was sent to effect reconciliation. In Romans 5.10, we read this, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. A second important consideration is that we are sent to proclaim that good news, offering reconciliation to the peoples of the world. We call people to be reconciled and to glorify the King of Kings through living worshipful lives. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the ministry 
of reconciliation. These are three important items for us to keep in mind as we think of the ministry of Jesus. Here is a summary of what we've covered in this lesson. We have learned where to find the Great Commission. You'll remember it's found in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, Mark 16, 15 through 16, Luke 24, 46 through 49, Acts 1, 7 through 8, and John 20, 21. We've also learned that the commissions were spoken in a variety of settings. We remember that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't record the words of Jesus in exactly the same place or in the very same setting. It was different. And from the mountains in Galilee to the opportunity of expressing those words from the Mount of Olives, we find the Great Commission expressed in those places. We also are aware of the fact that these were very important words that Jesus spoke. And we know that they were important because when Jesus says something over and over, he is exponentially emphasizing the importance of his teaching. Also, the post-resurrection ministry of Jesus was very important to the gospel writers. And almost every time he gets together with his, his disciples, he repeats the Great Commission. He is reminding them of what he wants them to do. The commissions were not just a passing saying. They were what our Lord expected us to do. And the third proof that the Great Commission is important is the fact that these were among the last words of Jesus here on the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 especially is significant because they were the last words that Jesus spoke before the ascension. Well, this concludes this presentation on the five restatements of the Great Commission. I hope you found this information helpful and you'll be able to perhaps use it in a teaching or a sermon sometime. May God bless you in every way.